Emmett, delighted to be here with you at the Topaz Dealer Summit here in Ballyconnell in Ireland. Thanks very much for coming, Dan. It's my pleasure. Now, Topaz uh, are well underway in terms of very significant investment and a yeah. rebrand uh, of, of Restore rollout in the Irish market. Yeah. Just tell us where you are in terms of numbers of sites and the level of investment as well here in, in the Irish okay. market. So we started the Restore program last December uh, and we've 82 sites done as of today. And we expect to have the balance 30 done by, by 1st of December coming. So it's a 20 million euro investment. Um, I, you know, I, I'd, I'd say half of it is catch up, quite honestly, and then half is new concept. So we're very excited by it and, and the, the results from it have been fantastic. So it's really working for us. Now the industry has taken notice. I mean, for instance, you won one of the biggest awards yeah. uh, in the industry this year, the Nax Insight International Convenience Retail of the Year Award, Absolutely. sponsored by Imperial Tobacco. How did you and the team feel about that recognition? You know, it's funny, Dan. Um, I, I guess you go into these things, you know, with low expectations because it was a new concept. It was a brand new site as well. Um, but we seemed to get a bit of momentum behind us and, and we were blown away. And when we actually won, the, the, the kind of the osmosis effect that that had throughout the group in terms of, you know, we're, we're in the right direction here. We're going on the right track. The brand is actually resonating with people, not just in Ireland. It was fantastic and it gives a lot of confidence moving forward. Now, looking at some of the presentations today, I saw a bit of a preview. One of the presentations had the statement, forget everything you know yeah. about forecourt retailing, and that really intrigued me. Yeah. What's, what's that kind of uh, statement about as far as you're concerned as the CEO? Yeah, I guess, you know, we, we come to this business from a, a different background than your traditional oil uh, operator, and we feel we're retailers. And we're looking at our real estate now and figuring, well, how can we sell more on that space? And, you know, obviously there's limitations of what we can do on the box. Um, so now we're thinking about, well, let's drop new boxes in. So we're, we're looking at a, a Mexican canteen, which we're putting into six of our sites at the moment. We're talking about bike shops. We're talking about pharmacy. Uh, we're really trying to give customers a different reason to come to our sites, not just fuel as the, the predominant reason. So. We're trying to, I suppose, flip it on its head and think, okay, we've got a, a prime piece of land here. What can we do with it and how can we maximize it? And it's working really well for us. That's very interesting. Now, what about retail culture? Because, I mean, from what I see and what I hear, you yeah. know, there's, a, there's a new culture alive <coughs> and kicking in, in the Topaz business. Yeah. And I see you as, as being very much behind that and driving that. So just explain where you're where your, what your thoughts are on that and, and what the strategy is. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're very kind to say that. I, you know, I think what, what I've probably done is lit a match and it's just blown up. Um, we had a huge team here anyway who were really, really passionate about retailing and about offering uh, best customer service and best product to, to our customers. So, so really, you know, the stars aligned when I came in terms of timing. Um, but, you know, as an organization, whether you're in our wholesale, whether you're in our commercial or whether you're in our actual retail outlets, everyone is pushing forward uh, to provide the best quality service and the best quality product. And when you have everyone with a very simple, clear view on, on what success looks like, it actually happens really, really fast. So very lucky in that regard. Now, looking at, uh, if, if you like, uh, the food service business yeah. uh, and food in general, which brands out there do you admire in terms of uh, comparisons? Yeah, I mean, I love um, Pret a Manger. I think Pret, you know, really signals quality for me in terms of the health space. Um, I think that they have owned that 100%, and, and, and that, to me, is, is really about executing a plan and not deviating from it, and they've done a super job, particularly in the last three or four years. I think they've been fantastic. We've also seen a lot of stuff coming out of the States and obviously you've got bigger populations there so you can try new things and you've got a volume of people. But things like Shake Shack, which are fun, which are, you know, not healthy, but they're fresh and if you're going to be bad, be bad in style. We love that. And so with our Rockets concept, we're, we're kind of championing the same thing and, and Cantina, our new Mexican, is going to be uh, along the same lines. Very interesting. I'm sure you're on the right lines there. We spend a lot of time looking at what's yeah. happening in the US and New York particularly. Yeah. You know, so we see a lot of developments with Shake Shack and other businesses you know, uh, really doing very well. The beauty of kind of my job is, um, you know, I just think about what I would buy. 
um, and talk to the, the wider team. And if we'd all buy it, well, then we're going to sell it. So that's, that's what we've adopted. How fast are consumer needs here in Ireland changing? Because I suppose just to give a context, Ireland has always done extraordinary things as far as the rest of the world's mm. concerned in your petrol stations and in terms of how much trust yeah. there is in there. But how, how fast is the Irish consumer changing their needs and thinking in terms of healthy, uh, healthier uh, yeah, it's, options and so on. You see, I, personally, I actually don't think their needs have changed at all. I think that there's an awareness that's happened um, where people have realised that they can actually have this healthy stuff, not in a health food store, they can have it on the go. And so there's been a, a realignment of, of what's acceptable for customers. Customers nowadays will vote with their feet very, very fast. And if you're not providing something that they want, they won't come back. Now, coffee and uh, yeah. the, the, you know, what you're doing around the full barista service sure. is obviously absolutely key to, yeah. to, 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 to what you're doing. Um, just explain, talk us through that in terms of what, uh, you know, what your goals have been. Yeah, well, we had, to, we had to take a view on it because obviously there's some very well-established coffee brands out there um, who we could have partnered with. Um, but we felt that partnering with them, we'd be giving up a bit of uh, margin and also a bit of brand equity. And we want to be a, a business that's famous for its brands. So we came up with a Restore Coffee, and really it's kind of an irreverent um, uh, approach to, to coffee drinking, you know. Uh, there's no excuse for bad coffee is kind of the mantra. Um, and it's, it's a massive growth area for us. It has been for a number of years. It's something that Topaz has always been very successful with. But since we've added our own brand and, and really created an identity, we've had a 30% increase in coffee sales in our sites. It's, it's been massive. So that's a 30% increase since, since the, the restore rollout yeah. with the full barista offer. Absolutely. In, in every, in, a full barista in every site? <clears throat> no, not in every site. No. Only where uh, demand satisfies it. Yes. But what, you know, if, if we don't have the full barista, we've got the best quality machines, which are effectively Starbucks machines anyway. So. It's a pretty interesting stat, isn't it? Yeah. Because I mean, the Topaz uh, best coffee on the road. Uh, yeah. I mean, that was that was a good a, a success story yeah, as far as coffee was yeah. concerned, anyway, absolutely. wasn't it? So to get a thirty percent uplift on it's that. It's funny though because you know I wasn't involved with Topaz uh, a year ago. So if you'd asked me a year ago would I drink a cup of coffee in Topaz, no. And I've never drunk in a cup of Topaz coffee. So I've never drunk coffee out of a Topaz cup because my perception of of what Topaz stands for is, is fuel and that's not something I want to put in my mouth, it's something I want to put in my car. So I think by having a Restore brand, we've actually unlocked this whole new user who would never come to us for coffee. So we've been, been able to hold on to what we had and grow it. It's very interesting when you think about, think about the, you know, the, what, what the future may hold, because obviously if the brand can stand up mm. uh, that well, it can also stand up in the high street. I mean, yeah. we're looking at the US now, Wawa have opened their first standalone right, yeah. store without fuel for 14 years. Yeah. Now, I mean, that's an interesting development here in Philadelphia. Yeah. I mean, it just struck me that, uh, you know, with the Restore brand, you may have the possibility to do that as well here in Ireland. Yeah, I mean, I read, uh, when we started researching our own brands, I read about Wawa and I read that Johnny Knoxville has their logo tattooed somewhere on his body. So I'm hoping that Daniel O'Donnell or some famous Irish celebrity will, will get the Restore logo tattooed on, on their body. Um, but seriously, I, you know, I, I don't know if, if that's the route we would go or not um, because we've so many opportunities for growth right now. We've just bought SO Ireland. That gives us another 100 stores, which will we'll then turn into Restore as well. And then it's about, do we continue to grow in Ireland or do we look to go abroad? And actually, America is a very attractive market for us and, and something we're, we're, we're deeply uh, involved in looking into at the moment. Very interesting. And yeah. what's attractive about the US market? I think the margins are good and um, fuel margins are sensible. You know, if you look at the UK, it's a lot tighter. Um, you know, there's, there, there's a huge room for consolidation in, in the States. 97% of fuel uh, petrol stations are owned by individuals as opposed to large corporates nowadays. Um, so that creates uh, opportunity for us and, and we see ourselves as consolidators. And, and if we can get 50, 60 sites in a country uh, as big as the US, you know, there's, there's massive room for, for growth. Now you mentioned Shake Shack and you mentioned yeah. some of the things you're doing with rockets, for instance. Um, I mean, we'd probably define that as fast casual. Yeah. And if you look at fast casual in markets like the US and probably you know, the UK as well, yeah. we've got Chipotle doing incredibly yeah. well. They're sort of the, the flag bearer for fast yeah. casual in the US and they're in London now as well. Yeah. I mean, do, is it, do you think it's important for, the, for operators like yourselves to be, um, to be developing fast casual and partnerships or whether you do it. I mean, the Rockets case is yeah, an interesting yeah, example. Yeah, I do. I mean, when we were coming up with our own fast casual offer, I went to see Shake Shack 
and um, they just floated uh, on the Nasdaq, and you know they they were valued at 40 million a store, you know, a restaurant. And uh, I asked them would they consider Ireland as a franchisee, and you know it was so far down their list of to dos to to come to Ireland that it, you know it, it was a flat no, but thanks for coming over. Um, and that creates massive opportunity because, you know, while these big organizations like Chipotle, Shake Shack, Nando's even, are, are having great success in the larger markets, they're leaving a lot of space underneath them where there still is a demand for quality, there still is a demand for, for brands. Um, and so operators like ourselves can come in and mop that up. And so that's why when we came back to Ireland, we partnered with Rockets uh, with a view to growing that. Do you think that the needs have been there in the US market, just as you were describing in the Irish market? So in other words, that there have been unfulfilled needs for consumers on the move as far as healthy is concerned. So do you think that, you know, in, in a way that, that there's a latent uh, demand there in, in the US market, just as it is in Ireland? Yeah, for, absolutely. For I mean, I think that everyone is becoming wise to the fact that, you know, you've got to maximize your output from these, these pieces of real estate. So, you know, then you've got to look at, okay, well, what are all these people interested in at the moment? And you've got to try and say bang on trend with that and, and health is on trend and fast casual is on trend. But, you know, being nimble and being able to change and adjust in five years, like, I don't know what's going to be the leading edge. I'm pretty sure coffee will be done. Um, it, you know, it'll be a commodity like petrol, you know, by that stage. Um, so, so you've got to keep pushing forward and, and, and trying to explore new, new avenues. And, and hence, we're looking at bike shops, pharmacies, you know, all these other things and um, to see which way our consumers uh, want us to go and, and, and try and guide them a little bit. But you're kind of playing battleships, you know, you're, you're, you're putting your boat on and, and you're, you're seeing if you get a hit or not and, and then you move your boat and, you know, so that's what we're trying to do and, and, and that's what we're effectively pushing towards. And just, you know, on a, on a personal note, what's your experience been in terms of taking the helm at a, at a, at a big brand like, like Topaz? And then what would your, if you like, advice be to, to someone else uh, who was, you know, aspiring to, to that kind of role in a, in a business? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, it's challenging. I think that if you are, if you're thinking of doing something like this, you know, key is building your team. Um, and I've been very, very fortunate that I've managed to keep a number of individuals and promote them up in the business, but I've also brought a number in as well. Um, and a number of people who worked with me before uh, and knew my style and, and my approach. When you're coming into a business that you haven't founded, uh, creating trust is the key thing and you want to create trust on speed because you need it fast because if you want to move fast, the people have to come with you. But I think that, you know, it's a great opportunity and, and you know anyone who who would say no to such an opportunity it, it would be mad in my eyes so you know you've just got to go for it well emmett congratulations again on, thanks, on winning sir. the international convenience retail of the year award and thank uh, thanks much. for talking to and us thank today. you for all your help dan really really appreciate it thanks very much great yeah. thanks